goes into effect immediately. The emergency order calls for more resources in order to make all of this happen. The mayor says that it is just simply too dangerous for kids in our city to remain unchecked and unparented. Listen to these numbers. So far this year, 458 young people have been arrested for serious crimes, including murder. 151 juveniles have been arrested for carjacking, which represents a third of all carjacking arrests in the whole city. Of course, is difficult, we're told, and that's why they will offer incentives for private providers. While we don't want any of our youth involved in the juvenile justice system, we want them to be in DYRS custody when they are, because we know whether pretrial or committed, they're safer. Having more space gives us that ability to ensure that they are safe. As I mentioned, we need to be able to classify kids and move them into different spaces. Hello, family. Welcome back to another episode of Journey to Harmony. I'm your host, Richard Harmon. Uh, today, I want to talk about the emergency uh, declaration that was made in Washington, D.C. And this is pretty much it, it's so annoyingly obvious that this was going to happen that it's worth rolling your eyes at. Um, so for the last like four years or so, um, I've, 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 I gave my life to Christ about um, 10, 12 years ago now. So I've mostly been in, on the conservative side for the most part um, during this time period, uh, you know, with someone who 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 understood the, the ideas of what the conservative movement was talking about uh, during the summer of defund the police and all these other things, I kept telling people, I said, eventually this is going to come back where these cities are going to be destroyed, and here we are living that reality right now. So right now, all of these, what's going on in D.C. is I grew up in a neighborhood where um, gangs were, were 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 pretty predominant, and what was happening then and continue to happen even more now is that the, the gangs are ran by 30 and 35 year old people. And what's what's happening, they understand that the youth for the most part are not being charged with anything. So they're having them go out and do a lot of the dirty work. They're committing um, thefts, uh, they're committing uh, burglaries, they're committing all, all, all these different crimes. And all of, and what's happening is they're, these kids are being arrested and then within 24 hours they're being released because there's no facilities to hold them. We'll go ahead and play a little video here. We'll watch a little bit of this and come back and talk about it just after that. Brine telling Fox 5 it'll close both of its locations this weekend. And for its H Street storefront, they say a spike in crime over the past few years played a part in that decision. The restaurant I'm looking at right now had four shootings there four weeks ago. Three months before that, a gentleman was shot five times, four doors down. Um, the U.S. Senator uh, Rand Paul's uh, associate was stabbed a half a block down. This is just one block of H Street. It's all over H Street. Then there's the Buttercream Bake Shop on 9th Street Northwest that's been in business for nearly a decade. On social media, they cite ongoing staffing shortages, rising cost of goods, and what they call a, quote, serious increase in crime throughout D.C. as the reason for shutting down. Um, this is a topic that really upsets me. Um, I'm someone who has always kind of been in the youth department in terms of working with young people. Um, I've always understood that uh, with all of the single parents that are out there, a lot of these young men are raising themselves. I, I for one, was one who was kind of, you know, me and my brothers were just out there kind of doing our own thing. Uh, basketball really helped and the Lord kind of directed me into the place where I was supposed to be uh, growing up. These young people are, <laughs> it, it's, it's upsetting because what's coming next is getting, you can already see what's going to happen. We have a commercial real estate crash that's getting ready to happen. Um, the downtown areas in most U.S. cities are going to become wastelands. The cost of the, the rent or the mortgage is so much higher than what the value of the properties were. What's going to happen is that these companies, for the most part, the way they're set up, they're able to walk away from their mortgages with no issues. They set the, the mortgage up under a different holding company and it has no obligation to it whatsoever. Um, many of these buildings are gonna become wastelands with the influx of all of the migrants that are happening. It's going to become an overcrowding of downtown and complete just, just return to the 1980s and 1990s in terms of crime. And many of the young people, what's going to happen is as the inner cities um, continue to let this go, no everyone pointing fingers at someone else, no one wants to, to make tough decisions. The suburban areas that are surrounding them, 
they're eventually going to, to ratchet up the um, the intensity in terms of the, the length of, of crime um, that are being done. So if you go into a city, you'll, you'll commit a burglary, you'll, you'll commit a robbery, you'll get off in 24 hours. What eventually is going to happen, all the stores you steal from are going to leave your area. They're going to then begin planning to go to these other places. And when they go to those places, something that they have done for, for years and gotten away with, they're going to get 30 years in result of, of that same crime. And you're going to see a whole generation of young people lost to this because for the most part, parents are not raising their children. Uh, many of these particular individuals, if you go to, to the schools and you tell the parents, hey, you know, your child is misbehaving, they'll yell at the, the teachers instead of actually disciplining the child. Those videos that are coming out where young kids are, are, are singing Skeety Eat um, by Foxy Red and things, different things like that. And it, it's really depressing because these kids are, they don't understand about what is it that's happening. Um, there was a young, young man who uh, he went out and he spoke terribly about Candace Owens. Um, you know, and his, his father or whoever it is in the house, whatever male it is, is sitting there encouraging him, telling him to continue disrespecting this woman. He said the little boy sitting there minding his business, but he said, if you want to egg me on, I'm going to say what I'm going to say. And this is a whole generation of young people are getting ready to be lost as a result of this. Additionally, the, the nation is building um, billion dollar prisons like crazy right now. So they're they're investing in Alabama. They need to build one for one point two billion. Um, Indiana built one for three hundred fifty million. Um, they're they're building prisons right now, and they're preparing what's going to happen within two years or three years when things get really terrible. They're just going to write a crime bill, and boom, that's it. You know, so so they're they're preparing the next wave of uh, young people who are going to be uh, from from school to, to prison, and these young people are being led astray by by you know their family members are being led astray by um, their politicians who refuse to do anything to, to stop them. Uh, they've tied the hands of police officers. This is this is a really terrible situation in total. And this is something that's gonna be seen throughout the country. New York City is being overrun. New, uh, Mayor Eric, Eric Adams has been standing up and speaking a lot about this particular issue and everyone's kind of turning on him right now. So what's gonna happen, eventually he's gonna be replaced and someone who, who's going to pretend like there's no issue is going to be placed in his, his stead and the city is going to go absolutely wild. Those who have money will leave because they're able to and those who don't will be left behind to fend for themselves. Uh, it, it, it's, it's a terrible situation that's happening right now. If you can't tell by my voice. I am very passionate and I'm very upset about this. But, you know, there, this what, what is it that, that we as people can do right now? You know, and if you're out there, if you're watching this, if you have a child, make sure that that child is being raised in a way that is respectful, um, because because in the years and times that are coming right now, it is not a time where you want your child to just be out and about walking around. A lot of these public schools are are, are worse for the most part than daycares. They are they're they're complete just just crazy grounds where the people only care about the state funding and making sure that the kids are doing well enough to pass their their exams. This is just total anarchy that's going on right now. And for the most part, the suburban areas will likely be uh, bu buttressed because people will continue to try to move out. The homeless population will continue to grow. Um, there, there's not a lot, of, a lot of good that I see in this. Um, but in all in all, I am a believer. And I believe that, in, that Jesus Christ, in time to come, he will return. And it, it's unfortunate, you know. So if you're watching this and, you know, this also breaks your heart, if you never had a chance to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, um, you know, look around the, the, the you know, the, the, the days of, of peace and, and quiet look to be fading fast. No one wants to hear anything about God anymore. So if you're someone who is out there and you are interested, um, you know, you, you're able to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Um, regardless of anything that we have done, he's willing to forgive us if we're willing to repent of our sins. Um, I, I, you know, come to you today. And if you're interested, I say just, just the basics, you know, um, you know, I gave my life to Christ when I was a young man. I was 19 years old at the time. I was, you know, living my life just however I wanted, smoking, drinking, just living my best life. And the Lord came and he arrested me during that time period. He gave me options to people who I can go and be mentored by and be raised in the faith to become the man that I am today. I'm happy. I'm a father. I'm, I'm, I'm a husband. Um, you know, I'm learning more and more about what is it that I'm called and purpose on this earth to be. 
And if you're watching these things that are happening right now and you're seeing and you're saying this is not the way that life should be, um, this is because that's true. A life without God. The Bible says a fool says in his heart that there is no God. And we're seeing right now what a society without God looks like. Um, it's complete and uh, unmitigated uh, degradation. And we're watching that little by little. So um, if it's your first time joining, please uh, consider liking, sharing, subscribing. Um, please, if you have any comments about this, please post them in the chat. And uh, thank you so much for joining. Have a blessed day. Mm -hmm. Thank you.